there's actually gravel underneath all of these rocks as we're staircasing our way back. That's gonna hold everything in place. When you get into some of these weird situations where you've got these big triangle gaps because these rocks are never gonna totally seat together perfectly, what we'll do is we'll take you know, some of these big pieces of gravel and kind of wedge them down in there, play around with them, and then we'll fill in with some little gravel and then just kind of do these little landslide areas in between. It proves to be pretty effective, but more importantly, it's uh, very structural, right? We don't want to be stepping on any of these rocks and all of a sudden that wall caving in. So it's very important to understand what you're doing and know that these are round rocks and if you put them on a point, they're going to want to roll. So you have to have little kickstands underneath them if that's the way you want them to look. But first and foremost is the functionality. This stuff's all underwater, so the aesthetics isn't nearly as important as the stuff along the top edge, but this is a great way to really fly through rocking and granite. And just remember to keep the size, about three different sizes of rocks, and the gravel is super key. We are back, it is another beautiful day out here on this Geneva project. Where we left off was we had the reservoir essentially rocked in. We've got to do a few things down towards the pump vault area, but then we're gonna work on setting the waterfall that is going to set water level for the rest of the pond. That's that negative edge that the pond will overflow into the reservoir. So we're gonna do that today. First things first, so I wanna go ahead and get a piece of liner seamed on to our headwater stream area. We were about three feet short, but I'm gonna go ahead and put on a 10 by 10 piece of liner give myself some flexibility i'm not sure if elevations are going to allow me to be able to pull off an overlap from this stream into the pond or if we're going to go ahead and have to seam that and it's just more of a badly brook waterfall with only about a three or four inch grade change haven't decided yet but i want to have a little bit of extra lighter just in case to allow for that creative freedom that we always always talk about here on the channel so we're going to go ahead and get this prepped get it primed get a piece of double-sided tape down then we're going to take that liner and attach it there and then also having that 10 foot by 10 foot liner will allow us to kind of fold and twist it if we want to because we're going to get pretty close over here with one or two of the rocks that we're going to put back behind that triangle rock right there. So we just want to make sure that we have that creative control that we always talk about. It'll be interesting to see what happens back over here. Once we get this done, we should rock and roll today. We were missing Corey, but we picked up Luis, so it's going to be the four of us today, and we'll make some good progress, I think. If we can get to digging the pond today, that would be crucial for kind of setting the tone for the rest of the week. But if we don't, then we will definitely get to it at the very beginning of tomorrow so hopefully this goes together relatively seamlessly get what we did there yep jack doesn't understand because he doesn't speak anything above kindergarten english D don't say anything please please don't let the world know don't give them any more ammunition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jack tell everybody out there how your weekend was exciting yeah yeah what'd you do you know, out, had a good time. yeah, yeah the some lucky ladies huh mm -hmm. or men whatever Jack single, by the way, just so everybody knows. Yeah, Repeat. It. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's your phone number? Jack. What? Come on. What's your phone number? <laughs> Come on, Jack. Jack. What's your phone number? Do you have a Snapchat? Do you have a Snapchat account? Huh? You on TikTok? Huh? Yeah. Are you? Whatever. Tinder? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. Fans only. Yeah. yeah that's right. Okay. All right. Good. So Jack. Dan, Luis, and myself are going to go ahead and get this thing seen. Let's go. We hit our milestone and the kind of the goal for the day, which was to get the waterfalls done, get our pond liner in. That's this enormous amount of liner that you see wadded up. This will span the entire length of this pond, both this way and this way. We've got a 40 foot wide piece because that's the roll that we had. It ended up being about a 40 by 55 foot piece that we brought in. We needed to have that much length of liner so that we could compensate for our overlap, which comes all the way over to here and then go all the way back 
back over to about the back third of that sunken fire pit area. Right now what Dan's doing, now that our overlap is done, we've got our waterfalls built and all of our wing wall rocks and everything done down in the basin. We are going to start digging the pond. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dig everything down to a two foot depth inside of this line right here and then all the way out to where Luis is kind of carving that. The reason we're doing that is a few things. One is we are going to carve out the entire pond down to that level and Dan is going to leave himself a path between the fire pit and that back wall to drive in and out so that we can come back in here once the liner is rolled back and we can set all the stuff on this side. This line right here represents the bottom coping stone for our bottom step. We have a series of hash marks painted out on this wall and what we're doing is, is we are going to build steps inside the pond mirroring or mimicking the existing steps that they have coming down from this upper patio. There will be two steps and then a bottom coping stone illustrating a bottom step. That's what that bottom line represents. This step right here will be about two inches above water. So it's very important again to understand water level which is dictated off of the bottom of that coping for the fire pit. We have it set two inches below the bottom of the coping stone so that we can get the water level as close and approachable to that fire pit as possible. We want to bring that water right up to the edge and make it so that when you're sitting down in that sunken fire pit you can lean over and feed the fish or the fish will swim right up to you. The reason we're going to dig this all down to the same level is I don't want to come back in here and try and dig this in sections as we go. If we can dig everything down to our two foot level, get a three foot section down in the bottom here, go ahead and dig our trenches for our circulation jets and some of the other cool things that we're doing. I want to go ahead and just do that now and then this way we can also get a lot of this dirt out of here so it's the rocks just can keep coming and going as we're placing them. So we're going to dig down to about that level all the way around for the shape of our pond. Also taking into consideration the reason we're going down to a two foot depth all the way around is because most of the rocks out there are above 26, 27 inches tall. So knowing what rock we have out there is also dictating what we're doing. But I just wanted to share that with you so that we're you guys have an idea of why we're doing this the way that we're doing it. Hope that makes sense. All right, so you can see Luis is working very, very hard. Uh, this morning, we are already making really great progress at digging our pond because our access is kind of one way in and one way out. We're digging a lot of this stuff ahead of time. So, and the fact that this liner comes all the way back over to the back edge of our pond is really forcing us to dig a lot of this stuff by hand. We're gonna have to set most of the rocks from this side about where the machine's at, probably come in just a little bit. So we're just gonna dig this in sections after this point, now that Dan's leveled him, himself off a platform. We're going to clean up all of our elevations. This is that area where those steps are going to come down into the pond. I'm having Luis kind of dig out this corner because I want to get another rock right here off of this little peninsula. We'll dig a rock in. This line down here, this white line, delineates our three foot deep section of the pond. So we're going to dig that down another foot. Right now that elevation is sitting at about two feet of water depth, which is exactly what we want for a majority of the pond. Dan's going to start digging this deep section down and through here. You can see we're running into a little bit of a bottleneck because of the dirt. We are down to one truck today, so we're going to need to be very efficient with how we're loading this dirt and get it out of here as soon as we can because it's going to disrupt our access as far as bringing rocks. Anyway, so we're going to get that soil out of here and at the same time try and rock this back section over here. It's going to be kind of a back and forth game of cat and mouse between us and the rest of the pond. Make sure we're operating efficiently, but it's going to look awesome and you guys will have a much better idea of what's happening once we get this liner kind of folded back onto itself. So we're going to keep plugging along here and yeah. Yeah, keep cleaning, okay? big challenge that we're running into is getting the dirt out and not try to block ourselves in. So we've got Corey in the skidster. He's loading up our Azuzu. Remember, we've got that switch and go body that will dump. We can fit about six yards of dirt in there. So he's doing a great job getting that dirt over to the shop as soon as he can. So it's load after load. I think we're on load 16 by now. But he's doing a great job getting this in, getting this dirt out of here. Chris, 
What are you guys working on? We are working on rocking in this shelf with uh, all the granite. And I was just kind of explaining to Luis and you about when we're doing granite, right? We really want to change up the size of the rocks. We don't want all the rocks all the same size. We also don't want it to look like a ring of pearls is straight line. So we're, we're kind of bringing big rocks out in front and then some rocks back behind. But when working with granite, because it's so rounded, you can't ever stack this stuff on top of each other because what'll happen is when those round points are in contact with each other, they'll roll. So you actually have to staircase your way back in a sense. So we use a lot of gravel. Right now we have two types of gravel, but a few different sizes of those two types. And what I mean by that is we have some of our three quarter red flint or cherry creek. And then we also have what they call two to three inch cherry creek. Now this is the same stone, it's just different sizes. This is our decorative gravel. This is the more expensive stuff. So we'll use this to pepper in the joints and that kind of stuff. But what we also have is our washed pond gravel. And this is more of a white yellowish stone. It's not as aesthetically pleasing. So we use that for filler back behind these rocks. So we get the rock to sit the way that we want it. Then we will backfill with gravel back behind this stuff. So there's actually gravel underneath all of these rocks as we're staircasing our way back. That's going to hold everything in place. When you get into some of these weird situations where you've got these big triangle gaps because these rocks are never going to totally seat together perfectly, what we'll do is we'll take you know some of these big pieces of gravel and kind of wedge them down in there, play around with them, and then we'll fill in with some little gravel and then just kind of do these little landslide areas in between. It proves to be pretty effective, but more importantly, it's uh, very structural, right? We don't want to be stepping on any of these rocks and all of a sudden that wall caving in. So it's very important to understand what you're doing and know that these are round rocks. And if you put them on a point, they're going to want to roll. So you have to have little kickstands underneath them if that's the way you want them to look. But first and foremost is the functionality. This stuff's all underwater. So the aesthetics isn't nearly as important as the stuff along the top edge, but this is a great way to really fly through rocking and granite. And just remember to keep the size, about three different sizes of rocks, and the gravel is super cute.